Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 Records video and another one in the series in which I'm taking a closer look at the full discography of the Rolling Stones and we have arrived at the 70s. And the 70s is an interesting territory because I think that in the late 60s and the early 70s the Rolling Stones were defining their sound and their songs that would become the a big part of their legacy and of their image. And we have arrived in 1971 with this album, Sticky Fingers. And what I find interesting about Sticky Fingers, well, numerous things actually, um, but the critics in the days uh, were talking about the Rolling Stones went into the world of hard rock. And I think that is a quite an interesting question to think about looking at this album. Were they influenced by hard rock or were they actually finding different influences, different influences in the day, different influences within themselves that would start to define a very diverse sound. And as a matter of fact, I think the latter is the case. Because when you look at this track list, the Rolling Stones are much more writing from well, uh, a diverse set of genres. And this is the first album in 1971 that had the Rolling Stones without the constant comparison and the constant um, Stones-Beatles uh, thing going on. Because the Beatles quit. The Beatles quit. The Beatles ended a year before this with Let It Be. Not the most brilliant goodbye, I can say. And the Stones were... That's a strange thing to say, but I think they were really finding themselves and you can see that in the track list for example this record starts off with brown sugar uh, these days well i believe also a little bit in the old days but especially these days it is a controversial song because it deals with um uh, a black woman who has been made a slave and uh, he, uh, jagger sings about a love affair um in a perhaps a bit too playful manner for the song um, I don't think uh, that is any reason to cancel the song, but I do understand this. Because I, I don't like canceling. I don't. I don't think canceling at all is is, is fair for um, for anyone and for a cultural understanding because um, even the wrongdoings you need to see to understand what is going on and 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 where the wrongdoings are. You know. Now, nevertheless, putting that aside, I do understand that the Stones don't think it's the kind of song to play right now and at this moment uh, on this moment in time um but brown sugar despite the controversy well which i just fairly addressed it's a it's i mean it's a banger it is a good song i mean it's risky it's edgy in its vocals but it's all uh, and in its lyrics uh, but it, you know it is a good song should it be hard rock i think it's not hard rock i think it's hard rhythm and blues i think it's very hard rhythm and blues uh, I have that Sway, Sway's a nice song, and then number three is one of the best songs ever written, Wild Horses. Now, this song also has some controversy, but mainly to the point who actually wrote it, because it is being said that Graham Parson was in the room. Now, Graham Parson did not claim to have written this song, but it is very much in line with the things he did write. Graham Parson did cover the song before the Stones put it on this record. So what is basically going on? Some people say Graham Parson wrote it, some people say uh, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger wrote it. What I think is at least fair to say is that you can clearly hear that Keith Richards allows Graham Parsons influence. I mean, there are influences on this album from, well, if it's hard, uh, hard rock or, or hard rhythm and blues, they are there. But there's also a country and country rock influence. Graham Parsons was putting things into the Rolling Stones that can be heard on this album. And Wild Horses, I mean, this is one of the best ballads ever written. They asked Bob Dylan, uh, if there were songs in which he was jealous that he didn't write them and he named Wild Horses as one of the examples it is a gorgeous brilliant song of a unique quality and um, and the record goes on can't you hear me knocking very good banger I can say yes 
Hard Rock is here, and perhaps Led Zeppelin also has his influence on the Stones, but the Stones are taking their influences not just out of the sake of popularity or, or what scores right here, they're also looking at what are their roots, and that makes this such an interesting album. Can't you hear me knocking? I believe them. It's a believable good song. It goes on, You Gotta Move, I think You Gotta Move is a very nice blues rocker, um, a believable blues rocker. Um, you know what, my opinion with regard to, to, to blues is... Whenever it's done white, it is most often not pretty convincing. The Stones are convincing in the blues over here. You know, one of those rare exceptions. It goes on. Side 2, Bitch. Bitch is a good track. Uh, uh, I got the blues. It's nice. Then, the third song from Side 2, Sister Morphine. Not written by... Um, I'm, I'm looking at the record here. Um, it's not written by uh, Jack and Bridges. I believe it was written by Marianne Faithful. Correct me if I'm wrong, because he was in a relationship with her in, um, at that moment. Um, and um, lyrically, that is, again, one of the best ballads of the 70s. And the way Jagger sings it, I mean, he... He, he is nailing it. He is nailing it with emotion and darkness. And it's it's a brilliant, brilliant song. It was banned from the Spanish edition of this album. And I can I can understand that. I hate banning. I hate cancelling. I hate banning. You just give an artist their stage and uh, everyone can decide for themselves if they like it and if they do not like it. And everyone for themselves can decide if it should, um, if it's dangerous or not. But art should be a, a place, a free place. That's, that's what I believe. Sister Murphy is brilliant. I mean, very good storytelling. And then we go on to Dead Flowers. Very nice country rock blues tune. I, I really enjoy it. That was also covered by Towns Van Zandt, who also did a good job. Yet, I prefer the, the, the Rolling Stones version. But, you know, these, these country, or, or the country and blues influences, I mean, I, I really love them. And I believe the Rolling Stones, yet they are a, a British band. And of Moonlight Mile. Yeah. Good song, good song. Now, what I'm holding here is a first German pressing of the album. And I did a video on uh, what is the best sounding pressing of this. Uh, you can find it on my channel. So I'm not going to go into it, but this is a German pressing uh, with TML and a dead wax. And, and that is, I mean, a beautiful, be beautiful, gorgeous sounding one. Uh, this one has, if I'm... I mean, I like this. I like this kind of things. Uh, and it also, of course, has the, the zipper. Uh, I put the zipper up for this video because I think it looks better on the video. But when it goes back into the closet, it goes uh, down because then it cannot damage the vinyl. So um, I love this design. It's an Andy Warhol design. And it's probably... It, it's probably Joe D'Alessandro, uh, the famous actor model from the factory who's wearing the pants. But who it really is? That's a myth. And this album, I mean, this this album is mythical. It's brilliant. It's challenging. It's daring. This is among the best things the Rolling Stones has done. And to start off the 70s with this album, man, I freaking love it. So that's my review for Sticky Fingers. Next one will be Exile on Main Street. So what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.